The text that I'm going to be doing an introduction on is in Colossians 2, verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. What does Paul mean by dead in sins? A few synonyms for the word dead are deceased, departed, lifeless, dull, and insensitive. Dead means life is gone, strength is gone. You lose the gifts God gives, gives his followers, and you become insensitive. Romans 6, verse 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace, grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead, dead to sin live any longer therein? In the earth, when someone hits you, you're sensitive and you can feel the pain. But if you go to a deceased person and hit that person hard, they will not feel the pain. It's the same way spiritually. When a person falls to sin and leaves Christ, they won't feel the pain. It's the same... Sorry. While you are in Christ, sin is like a painful hit from Satan. But when out of Christ, you are insensitive, so you can't feel any pain till Christ calls you to himself. When you are dead, that means you don't believe in God. I know people believe in the once saved, always saved doctrine, but it is incorrect. Paul makes this clear in Romans. Romans 8, verses 6 through 9. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Can you honestly say that God would let a wicked person who used to believe in him never again in their life repented and is dead into the kingdom of heaven? I asked a classmate that question, and their response was, why not? They were baptized and believed. But that classmate used the past tense were, not the present tense are. The question is not, I was alive to Christ, so will I be okay if I leave Christ now? The question is, am I dead to Christ or am I alive to Christ? God will not have any part of sin, so why would sin be allowed into his kingdom? The answer is, sin is not allowed. When you are dead in sins, that also means you are living after the flesh. Romans 8, verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Paul also mentions in this text the uncircumcision of flesh. To circumcise means to cut off. Say you have a piece of fruit that has a nasty part that is able to be cut off, so you can still use it, but you let it sit for several weeks. What happens? It rots. It becomes nasty, moldy, and has an awful smell, so it has to be thrown away and it can no longer be used. The parallel here is that God cannot use anything dead. It has to be thrown away. The parallel here... Sorry... Then Paul continues by saying that Christ has quickened us together with him and has forgiven us of our sin. What does he mean by quickened? Well, it means Jesus gave us life, and that life is not just any life that can come from man. So the idea here is to make alive. John 17, verse 1 through 3. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It is spiritual, eternal, and wonderful life. This life is not accessible out of Christ. John 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. And this life isn't for one person, it is for all who follow, those who are called by God, and believe God and his son. And all of us get the same life from Jesus. It's not that Sister Logan gets type two, or Brother Bob gets type three, and Sister Nicole gets type six life. That wouldn't make sense. It's one type of life, and it comes from Christ and only Christ. Once we receive this life, we know that Jesus has forgiven us of our sins, and like the life from Jesus, his forgiveness cannot be done by any man on this earth. I knew of a man that told a few people that he had power from God to forgive sins, but he was ignorant of God's word. Matthew 9, verse 6. 
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. So we are to be aware of sin, cut it off, thank God for the eternal life he has given us all, and praise him for the wonderful forgiveness from, from him that's given to us. And remember this, brethren, sin is death, but Jesus Christ gives eternal life. Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.